How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at 11.1 .1, Collision Theory and Factors affection, Affecting Reaction Rate. And our objectives will be to 11.A, explain what is needed in order for a reaction to occur, and spoiler alert, it's collisions with correct energy and orientation, as well as describe what factors influence reaction rate, describe how changes in the system would affect the rate of reaction. So basically, if we want to speed up a reaction or slow it down, what can we do? All right, first, let's start with an analogy. To hit a home run in baseball, for all our baseball fans out there, what needs to happen? What does the batter need to do in order to hit a home run? Well, first off, they need to make contact with the ball, right? Ball's coming, they need to swing and actually hit it. If they swing and miss, you're definitely not hitting a home run. So there's got to be some sort of collision with the ball. Next, you need to hit it at the correct angle and orientation, meaning that if you hit it, you know, at above the ball, you might ground it out, or if you hit it in the wrong part, you might hit it foul. Uh, so you want to make sure you hit it in the right spot. You also need to hit it with enough energy so that the ball travels all the way out of the baseball field. It goes over the wall and into the stands or out of the park and you hit a home run. So you need to make sure you hit it with enough energy. Uh, right. So these are the same things that need to happen for a reaction to occur. So let's take a look at some chemistry. So what's going on during a reaction? I have an example reaction right here for just reference. So we have two uh, atoms or two molecules come together. We got H2, we got Cl2, and they're going to react to make two HCl molecules. So first off, what's happening during a reaction? Bonds are being broken. That requires the input of energy. In order to break these bonds, you need to put in energy. So put in energy to break the bonds, and then you got new bonds being made, which is going to release energy. So breaking bonds requires energy, making bonds releases energy. So this is kind of what happens. You break the old bonds, you make new bonds, right? And that's what's happening during a reaction. Well, how does it happen? First, particles need to collide with the correct orientation and with enough energy for the reaction to occur. So these collect collisions that result in a reaction we call effective collisions. Why are they effective? Because they resulted in something happening. You know, so just because the molecules bump together doesn't mean you get a reaction. But all the collisions that result in a reaction, we call effective collisions. So boom, if that happened, we just had an effective collision, a reaction is going to occur, those old bonds are going to get broken, and then new bonds are going to be made, right? So we just had a reaction, we changed the bonding, effective collision just occurred. So how do they happen? First, they need to collide, right? If you don't collide, you have no reactions. Just like if a batter swings and doesn't hit the ball, nothing happens, right? So boom, <laughs> no, no collision, no reaction. So they also need to have the correct orientation. They need to collide in the right way for a reaction to occur. So here's an example of them colliding in not the right way. So this isn't the way that they need to collide in order to react. So no reaction. That's not the orientation they need. They need to collide in a different way. So, boom, colliding like this, that's the way they need to collide. So now you got a reaction occurring because they, you know, the, the batter hit the ball in the right spot. What else needs to happen? They need to have enough energy. Just like the batter swinging the bat, they need to hit it hard enough so that it, you know, causes something to happen. If molecules are moving all slow and they bump into each other, you get no reaction. Whereas if they had a more energy, Bam! And then you get a reaction. So they need to have enough energy, they need to have the right orientation, and they need to collide. All right. So back to the analogy. How is reaction hitting? How is reaction like hitting a home run? So you need the, the right orientation, and you need enough energy. And it needs to collide, right? Right orientation of collision, I'm going to say, because you need a collision. All right, I don't know why I wrote it up there. Too bad for everybody. So if that's true, how can we speed up a reaction? If that's what needs to happen for a reaction to occur, how can we speed it up? Another way to ask this question is, like, how can we increase the number of effective collisions? If effective collisions cause reactions to happen, how can we have more of those? Well, first, you can take a look at surface area. If you increase the surface area, you increase the chances of collision. So it's like if we had a powdered reactant versus chunks. You know, I think sugar cube versus powdered sugar. Which one do you think is going to dissolve quicker? Well, let's take a look. In this analogy right here, we have the cube. And you can see we've got molecules bouncing around. And then look for how often that they collide with the sugar cube. So that's kind of your baseline. And then if we take a look versus the powdered, 
those particles are more spread out. They have more surface area, and you can see there's a lot more collisions going on, right? So the powdered ones have more collisions. So if you increase the surface area, you increase the chances for collisions, which is going to speed up the reaction. You can also have more reactants to collide with. So if you increase their concentrations, they're more likely to bump into each other. Uh, for gases, you can do that by increasing the pressure on the gas reactants, which is also going to increase their concentration. So for gases, you can increase pressure. Uh, anything that's going to increase concentration is going to increase reaction rate. So my analogy is like, where are people going to bump into each other more? A very crowded concert or like an empty concert that nobody went to? So we can see uh, this one. This, this is low concentration. How often are those particles colliding? You know, every so often you get a collision. I just saw one there. Versus what if we had a very crowded concert? You can see there's a lot more collisions going on in this second one. They're bumping into each other all the time because concentration's higher. We can also have the reactants moving more faster or moving more or faster, right? If they're moving more, they're more likely to collide with each other. Uh, and you can have them move more by increasing the temperature. So if you increase the temperature, particles are going to move more, makes them more likely to collide with each other. An analogy, it's like picture a, you know, a, small, a playground, you got a bunch of seven-year-olds running around all energetic, and then you, you know, empty that playground out and you put a bunch of senior citizens in that playground to party. Which one do you think will have people bumping into each other more? The senior citizens that are moving all nice and slow like that, are we going to have as frequent collisions as if we had seven-year-olds running all over the place, bumping into everything. Exactly. So higher temperature, more collisions, faster reaction. Increasing the temperature also has another effect. It increases the number of collisions that have enough energy. So part of it is, do we have enough energy for that collision? So if we give it more, if we raise the temperature, we're giving it more energy, more of those particles have enough energy. Uh, so more of the collisions will have enough to be effective. So if we're going off slow, right, if this is low temperatures, things are moving slow, not enough energy for a reaction. Whereas if we did it in high temperature, they're moving faster. They're going to have enough energy for reaction. More of those collisions are going to be effective because they have more energy. Another way is by adding a catalyst. So you probably have seen catalysts before in biology or something. What do they do? They speed up reactions. But how do they do it? So a catalyst provides an alternate mechanism for the reaction. So my analogy is like finding a shortcut on the map. If this is my home and I got to go to work, which is all the way over there, maybe this is the route that I take, right? I'm traveling the road this way, and that's my normal way. But if I had a catalyst, a catalyst is like finding a shortcut. And it's like, hey, guess what? There is a path that I can take that's a lot shorter than the route I normally take. That's going to speed things up. It's a, a quicker mechanism. Right, so what does adding a catalyst do? Provides an alternative mechanism, and it lowers the energy needed for a reaction to happen. So this right here, if we're taking a look, if this is the energy that I'm starting with, this right here from there to that point is the activation energy. So remember, breaking bonds requires energy. So we need to invest some energy to get a reaction to happen. So this big hump right here that we got to go up and over, is how much energy do we got to invest in order to get that reaction to occur? What a catalyst does is a catalyst lowers the amount of energy that you need to get that reaction to start. So because we found a new way, a shortcut, we don't have to use as much energy to get that reaction started, so the reaction is going to speed up. In baseball, it's like if you were to play baseball on a smaller field. You know, you got a major league player and you put him in a little league field, they're more likely going to hit a home run because it's a smaller field. Inhibitors are the opposite of catalysts. Sometimes it's important to slow down a reaction. Like Let's say, for example, a reaction releases a bunch of energy, and that would be problematic. You don't want it to overheat. You want to slow down that reaction. You can use an inhibitor. It's going to slow it down. It's kind of like a detour on your commute, right? So if this is my normal path that I take to get to work, and then all of a sudden, hey, there's a problem with the bridge or something, there's a detour. You know, you can't cross right here. That's closed. You have to go all the way out and around. All right, well... Now that's going to make me take longer. I have this detour. It's going to take me longer for that reaction to occur. It's going to slow it down. All right. So summarize. Explain what's needed for a reaction to occur in terms of collisions, uh, the amount of energy and orientation, as well as describe what factors influence reaction rate and describe how changes in a system would affect the reaction rate. All right. So that's what you need to be able to do. 
Hope you found this helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.